Congress, Women Akima Williams. So welcome, welcome to my constituent, Ann Kramer. Where's Jeff? Thank you, Ann and Jeff, for hosting us in your home today. I see your hand above the crowd. But y'all, welcome, welcome to the Fighting Fifth Congressional District. So it is my honor today to not only be here with the First Lady of the United States, but y'all, we are here because we have a really special guest, who is the next governor of Georgia. Y'all, I know that you're the true believers, and so I don't have to tell you what's at stake in this election cycle. But I also know that you've watched all of the polls, you've seen the pundits, and you know everything that's been said about this upcoming gubernatorial race. But what you also know is that as Georgians, we don't have to believe the naysayers. We don't have to follow the trends in the polls because we know that when we put in the work, we can change the trajectory of history. And that's exactly what we're going to do starting Monday, October 17th, when early voting starts and we go to the polls in mass to elect the next governor of Georgia, Stacey Abrams. in this room and you are going to continue to promote early voting because y'all we don't have an election day in Georgia we have an election season and it starts on Monday so y'all join me in bringing up the next governor of the state of Georgia my friend Stacey Abrams Thank you to all of my friends, new friends, old friends, friends I've yet to meet, but thank you very much for your money. Um, <laughs> as you all know, we are 25 days out from Election Day. But as I said this morning to our canvassing team in Savannah, what I said to our South Metro team as they were being launched, what I said to our Macon team, because I've been talking to folks all day, is that we are 25 days from victory. In yeah. 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 to the polling, but I want to talk about it for a second, because as she said, you all are true believers, but you're also the people who pe folks ask what's going on. Mm -hmm. So let's be clear about the polls. We have seen a poll recently from a consortium, and it was a 51% Republican poll. Yeah. Shockingly, I'm not ahead in a Republican poll. <laughs> but the Q poll, mm -hmm. which took a much more reasonable sample of what Georgia showed we were in 2018, in 2020, and 2021, it shows this is a 49-50 race, a dead Woo! heat, and we are on our way to make it. Now, it is political tradition for candidates to say one poll is good and one poll is bad, but hear me out. You see, polls are snapshots. They tell you what people see. The question is, what are you looking at? Mm -hmm. I've been traveling this state since December, talking to folks, thousands of folks, and folks have been a little unhappy because I went to the Arab Fest, and I went to Latino Fest. I went to an AAPI rally. I marched the two and a half miles of pride. I've had 50 events with African Americans. I've talked to black men and white men. I've talked to communities in North Georgia and South Georgia. I've been across the state, and what I can tell you is that folks want more for their lives. Mm -hmm. They want more freedom, they want more money in their pockets, and they want more opportunity for their children. They want to feel safe and surrounded by that opportunity. And what they know is that for the last four years, they felt anything but safe. They felt anything but advantage. They felt anything but secure. And what they know and what we know is that the snapshot that we can see of Georgia is the Georgia of tomorrow. But it starts today. It starts with reaching into communities and telling them we see you, we hear you, and we're going to speak up for you. And it's about saying that the polls are telling us what could be, but we decide what will be. And that is we will be a state that returns to the basics. We will invest in education from cradle all the way to career. Yes. And one of the reasons I am so proud to stand with Dr. Jill Biden is that she is someone who understands at her core how critical education is, how it is foundational to every future we imagine for our children. That's why we have to address the issues of early childhood learning. 
why we have to have universal pre-K because I don't understand four-year-olds on a waiting list. I've never met a four-year-old who could wait to turn five. <laughs> but it's also about paying our teachers a living wage, a starting yes. salary of $50,000. <laughs> it's about giving them more than a pay raise on layaway. I want to increase every educator's pay by $11,000 thousand dollars and we can afford to do it in Georgia because we've got the money. We just need the leadership. Yeah. 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 And when our students graduate from our high schools, which are cathedrals to learning, not fortresses of fear, I want them to have 20,000 apprenticeships so they can learn while they earn. But I also want to restore something we lost in 2011, and that is, Dr. Biden, free technical college in the yeah. state of Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. The technical college, the community college, is the foundation for the next set of opportunities, the next set of skills. And in Georgia, it was once free, and it can be free again. We are going to, for the first time, create need-based financial aid in the state of Georgia. I'm here to tell you. I was lucky, but I have a few siblings who were C students, and they should still be able to see their way to college. <laughs> but education is just the beginning. Georgia must have health care in the state. We are losing Woo. just today. Well, we just gained someone. What? Mayor Andre Dickinson. Yeah. 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 We're absolutely in the right room. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Dickens has been fighting a glorious fight to save health care in the city of Atlanta. If you read the AJC yesterday, you know that wait times for ambulances in South Atlanta, in South Georgia, in South Fulton, are up to an hour waiting for an ambulance. And as of today, with the closure of a level one trauma center, one of only five in the state, with the closure of that emergency room, those wait times are going up, and so are the death rates in our state. But this is a solvable problem, and I am proud of Mayor Dickens and his refusal to let them turn a hospital into a high-rise condominium. We are going to fight the But we need a governor willing to expand Medicaid and stop lying about what is and start fighting for what should be. And I will do that as the next governor of the great state of Georgia. But we also must have affordable housing in our state. And we know that the mayor and our congressmen have been fighting to get resources to the state. But you don't need resources if you have good leadership. Georgia has the money. The governor is sitting on $450 million he refuses to deploy to keep people in their houses. It just so happens he also makes millions of dollars on real estate, but we won't talk about that right now. But what we can talk about is that there is a pathway to victory where people know that if they have a new governor, they have a new lease on life. Mm -hmm. It's about making sure that folks can make a good living for themselves, whether they work for themselves or someone else. It's also about protecting our children and our families from rampant gun violence that yes. has gone up under this governor as he has weakened Ooh. gun laws. Yes. And it is about protecting a woman's right to choose and yes. restoring it. <laughs> break Georgia's promise to its women. It's going to take a woman to put it right. Yeah. And as I think about extraordinary, incredible women, there is no one I am prouder to stand with today than the First Lady of the United States, Joe Biden. This is a woman who has stood four square for our children, for our families, for our veterans. She is here today because she understands how vital Georgia is to the rest of the nation, but more importantly because she understands that people need to be seen. They need to know someone cares, and they need to know there is a future that is stronger and brighter than they can imagine. I am honored to introduce our First Lady, to introduce the woman who is here because she knows what Georgia is capable of because we gave them 16 electoral college votes. <laughs>
look, she's not going to be angry. Oh, there she is. I'm going to push you forward. I'm going to bring you forward. I'm going to be in church. I'm going to be like a fucking needle back there. So I want to... Where's the rope? Where's the rope? Yeah, where's the rope? Okay, so thank you, Stacey. And thank you to, con to the Congresswoman. Nikima, you've been such a great partner to Joe, and you're making John Lewis proud every day. Yeah. And, and Jeff, you know, I'm grateful that you brought us all together today, and I think you have enough energy inside of you. <laughs> But it's wonderful to be back here in Atlanta. And you know, when I was growing up, there were a lot of things that shaped my life. My father's naval service in World War II, uh, being the oldest of five girls, and cheering on the Phillies every summer. And <laughs> But what wasn't a big part of my life back then was politics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I knew that my parents were Republicans, <laughs> but they didn't talk about that at the dinner table. Instead, they talked about my dad's job at the bank and about my grandparents' health and, you know, the dreams they had for me and my four sisters. And I bet a lot of your families are exactly the same. So when I met Joe, you know, I, I really felt out of touch with his world in D.C. So on our first date, I remember thinking, thank God I voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was a long time ago. But for many Americans, things aren't much different today. Most parents don't come home from work and debate the ins and outs of Senate bills, <laughs> but they know about the things that really matter to our families. You know, good schools for our kids, job opportunities, affordable health care, and safe neighborhoods. Democrats, Republicans, and everyone in between. And, you know, I've had the chance to travel, I think, 40 states um, and meet Americans from all walks of life. And I've been to places where they think Joe is the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. And then I've been to other places. <laughs> I've been to other places where, you know, they were, were concerned with if you have nothing good to say. Uh, so I've been to those places too. And there have been times that I've been met with anger or hurt. But I've also found that the values that unite us are really mm -hmm. deeper than our divisions. And I've seen how just a kind word or gesture can just relax somebody's shoulders just a little bit. You know, maybe open their heart to what you might have to say, you know, even if you know that you'll never agree. And I've seen how despite our differences, people across this country all want the same things the chance to work hard mm -hmm. and build a good life for their families. Mm -hmm. Which is why it's so harmful that there are politicians out there treating government like a sport mm -hmm. who perform political stunts mm -hmm. because they think that they can score a few more points mm -hmm. against the other side. Mm -hmm. When your current governor brags about signing one of the toughest abortion bans mm -hmm. in the country, when he refuses to expand Medicare for Georgians who desperately need health care, as Stacey said. When he tries to make it harder and harder for people to simply use their voices and to go out and vote. I know that that makes you angry. And it should make you angry. Because governing isn't a game. There's no us versus them. No teams to root for or against. We're just people, just Americans. You know, Americans from all walks of life who need help and need hope. And Stacy knows that. In fact, she has spent her entire career mm -hmm. fighting 
for the people of Georgia. You know, not fighting for blue or red, but one Georgia. Georgia where all kids can get a great education, where all families can afford health care and the housing they need, where small businesses can thrive and communities are safe from violence and, and where the freedom to vote and the right to choose are protected. Atlanta, Stacy has been a tireless champion of your family, and we need her as your next governor now. <laughs>
everyone across the state to show up this first week of early voting. Let's go get it done.